Hey everyone, welcome to our first virtual run challenge. You can participate from anywhere in the world at any time. Feel free to share this challenge with a friend or family. We'll really appreciate that. In this video, we're gonna share number one, our favorite running tip of the week that will make you a much better runner. Number two, an incredibly inspirational story of running. And number three, one virtual running challenge for you. When you complete the virtual running challenge, we'll pick three winners to send a completely free running gift to. You don't wanna miss this challenge and you definitely don't wanna miss the story of Julius Akon. I ran away to save my life. My running took me into Olympic Games and multiple records. But the most important place running took me was into the lives of the children and to help my community. Amidst war, death, and some of the hardest setbacks in life, Julius kept running. And though he never won a gold medal, he achieved something infinitely better. Okay, so the running tip of the week is good runners condition their entire bodies. Strength training is key for runners. We'll have a link below with some specific exercises that will help you become a better runner, but we also have a video that we recommend through Train With Gains by Brains. It's definitely been really helpful for us as we train to run more. We'll also include a link below where you can find this video and do it on your own. Okay, and now for our inspirational story of the week. And then one morning I went for a run. So at the end of my run, then I found this 11 orphan sleeping under the bus. They said their parents were dead. And then I said, can I walk you to my family? So they all accepted and they walked together with me. He never won a gold medal. He saw death, war, and some of the hardest setbacks in life but he kept running and achieved something infinitely greater. Akon grew up with eight other siblings in Uganda during the Ugandan crisis. His home was a mud hut with a leaky straw roof. He usually would only have one meal a day and drank water from a local swamp that was shared by cattle. His parents could not afford the $15 tuition for school, so he would sneak into class whenever he could. At the age of 10, Akon would run on a really narrow village dirt path just to get home. When Akon was 12, one day soldiers abducted him and put him in an LRA camp over 100 miles away from his home. Just three months into the camp, during an air raid, Akon managed to escape, but nine other boys with him at the time were shot and killed. Just a year after returning home, Akan entered his first foot race and won the country race. He qualified into the district championships, but he had no money to get to Lyra, which was 42 miles away and where the championships would be held. He tried offering a chicken to the only person with a car in his village, but when they refused, he had no other option but to run to Lyra. Six hours later, Akan made it to the championship race in Lyra. At the championship, Akan won the 800 meter race, the 1500 meter race, and the 3000 meter race easily, all while running barefoot. At just 13 years old, Akan qualified for national championships in Kampala. At Kampala, Akan managed to win the national championships where he was awarded a five gallon jug to carry water. Akan was awarded a scholarship to attend high school where he blossomed as a runner. At the World Junior Championships, he was the first Ugandan to win the gold medal. After that, 24 American colleges offered him a scholarship. Akan chose to go to George Mason University. Akan, the star of the team, led his school to the NCAA Indoor Championship in 1996. A few months later, Akan competed at the Olympics in Atlanta, Georgia. Although Akan did not make it out of preliminary rounds, that's where his story really began. During his time in college, the war in Uganda was escalating. Rumors were the LRA was torturing villagers. Men who resisted joining the military were butchered, boiled, and their families were forced to eat the stew. Fearing for his parents' lives, Akan dropped out of GMU to go back to Kampala. Although his parents were alive and well, his student visa expired and he was left stuck in a war zone. 
One day back home during one of his runs, Akan stumbled across almost a dozen kids under an old bus. The kids were in rags and covered in dust. Thinking these were corpses, Akan initially backed away. But suddenly one of the girls got up, kneeled, and begged him for money. As he talked to the kids, he found out the children's parents had been shot dead. They'd all been homeless for the past year, so they decided to huddle together. In the morning, the kids would beg, and at night, they would find shelter. The oldest boy there was 10 years old, and the youngest was 3 years old. Akan immediately brought all the kids to his parents' home. But room at his parents' home was already scarce, and they barely had enough money to feed themselves. Nonetheless, his father agreed to care for the children, provided Akan would find a way to send money to feed the children. Desperate, Akan found a running job in Portugal that paid $5,000 a year, plus any earnings from races. To feed the orphans would cost about $1,200 a year, which was about a quarter of his salary. Unable to afford rent, Akan slept in a cot in the basement of his running club. The basement had no electricity or heat. Despite being homeless himself and barely scraping by every month, Akan kept running and managed to compete in the semifinals of the Olympics in 2002 in Sydney. His big break came when his old coach at GMU helped him find a job as a pacer for elite runners at Nike. The job paid $1,600 a month and it allowed him back into the US. But $1,600 a month was barely enough to cover for him and his wife Grace Yet still, he managed to send back $100 a month to the orphans. While in Portland, Akan qualified for his third Olympics. His coach told him that he was at the cusp of being a world-class runner. But shortly after that one day, he found out his mom was shot by the LRA. His father pleaded for Akan to send $1,500 to care for his mom. Akan was devastated he didn't have the money. And while he did all he could to raise cash, his mom eventually bled to death. Akan was haunted by his mother's death and affected his training. His career soon began to collapse following a knee injury in a race and then later a back injury from a car accident. One day, one of Akan's co-workers invited him to have dinner with a man, Jim Fee. When Fee and his wife learned about Akan's story with his family and orphans, they decided to contribute $500 a month to the cause. After Fee retired from the medical industry, he decided to devote more time to helping Akan's nonprofit, Akan Uganda Children's Fund. In 2010, Akan invited Fee to visit Uganda. Fee reluctantly went, but it was there he saw the deplorable conditions of the Ugandan hospitals. He saw not only how little the orphans had, but also how little it took to make a huge impact. During his timely visit, all 12 children had happened to catch malaria. Fee helped take all 12 children to the clinic to care for their needs and illness, and he also bought them mosquito nets. It all only cost 150 US dollars. Akan wanted to raise money to build a clinic, and then a village school, and he also wanted to develop a sports program to help children traumatized by the war. When you run, he said, it helps you forget. Through his life, Akan recognized his improbable survival amidst so much war and disease was truly a gift from God, a gift that he needed to share with others. In the fall of 2012, the Christina Health Center, named after Akan's mother, opened its doors in Akan's home village. Since then, it has treated 24,000 patients. Construction recently finished on the center's fifth building, named in memory of Jim Fee, who died in 2013 in a bicycling accident. Fee's family remains fully involved in a Khan Uganda Children's Fund. Jim's widow, Angela, is executive director, and his sons are on staff. A Khan also partnered with Australian Olympic distance runner Eloise Wellings and her nonprofit Love Mercy to support 40 Ugandan orphans. Akan now lives in his home, Kampala, with his wife and two sons. He still runs five days a week. And though he never won any gold medals or reached a level of fame, Akan's difficult journey led him to a life of fulfillment and making a difference in the lives of the people in his hometown. 
His story teaches us not to see the setbacks in our lives as roadblocks, but building blocks to our character. But most importantly, despite whatever setbacks we experience in life, to always keep running, because you never know how your life will become a huge blessing for others. In honor of Julius Akan's inspiring story, here is a virtual run challenge for this month. Comment in this video with your results or email us in the link below. If we pick your response, we'll send you a completely free running gift and we'll choose three winners. Run or jog a race in honor of someone past or present. This run is dedicated to them. Share with the rest of us their story. It can be as short as one sentence or as long as a few paragraphs. We can keep the name anonymous if you prefer. In our next email, we'll announce any winners and the prize that we're giving away for free. If you like this video and the virtual running challenge, make sure to like the video and subscribe. Okay, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching and running with us. We'll see you in the next challenge.